What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and I am here with Justin Bell, the composer of, well, a ton of games. Pillars of uh, Eternity 1, Pillars of Eternity 2, Tyranny. I've got a couple here that I was surprised about. Um, is it true? What work did you do on Stick of Truth, exactly? Was that sound? It was. So I was the audio director on Stick of Truth, and um, so a lot of that was just managing the sound team, gotcha. the VO. Um, I worked very closely with... Um, South Park's composer, his name is Jamie Dunlap, a really awesome composer. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote the vast majority of the music. My only musical contribution, other than working with him and figuring out how South Park can translate into a game environment, right. uh, which was a challenge in and of itself. Um, and only... handled spectacularly. Thank you. Dude, Thank you. Yeah, seriously. that's, yeah, that, it was, it, it was, a, it was quite a task, I have to admit. Um, and, you know, the only thing that I did in terms of music was besides just working with him and making sure that that was I implemented all of his music so mm -hmm. that it flowed. Uh, so that was a, a big focus of my thing. And then when you go to Canada, all the 8-bit stuff is stuff that I did. And that was just a ton of fun. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. So the first thing everybody, everybody loves to know, like, how did you get started in the business as a whole? Like, even if it was something not on your LinkedIn, like, how did you jump into this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think a lot of people kind of share this, you know, I, I grew up playing games, and I also played music, you know, and it didn't, it didn't really occur to me that I could take those two things and kind of mash them together. <laughs> you know? Right. You know, and, um, and so, you know, but I played games all the way back to the nest days, you know, that's kind of the, the farthest back I go with games. And then I've been a gamer ever since. And so when I was about in my mid twenties, um, you know, I just sort of had like this aha moment, like, wait a second, people get paid to do this. And I was like, I, I was <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. Like sometimes I just have to remind myself, you know, it's like we were right. doing stick of truth and I'm sitting in here and I'm trying to record a fart with sound with the right <laughs> viscosity and this, the right tonal cadence and, and I'm really, really, you know, taking this seriously. And I kind of just had to stop and pause. And I, I was like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to record right. fart sounds with my mouth right now. This is just ridiculous. So, you know, every day is a blessing in that regard, you know. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> uh, when um, you got hired, you did some work for Pandemic, I saw. And yeah. uh, what was what was that game? Uh, the saboteur. So I saw in your, I think it was LinkedIn, but it, there was some, it, there was some discussion about your. Uh, was it a translation that you handled? Was it vocals? What was that? Yeah, the the what I focused on the most over there was mm -hmm. um, they just needed someone. They the game had a ton of dialogue and and it's fantastic. Um, I love that game. Did that's awesome. Yeah, I love that game. Have you beat it? Have you do you get a chance to play your own games? I I guess that's another question we can answer later, but. Yeah, you know how it is. Like I play, you know, I'm I'm working on the game so much right. that, you know, all it's just it's just an unfortunate thing. When I play the game, all I can see are the things that I wish I could have done better. <laughs> well, I've got a question about that in a bit. Um, so so you were doing the the sounds vocals then for Saboteur. I did. Yeah, I mostly the voiceover stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, there was just a ton of dialogue recorded over a long period of time. And uh, at different studios, different actors. So there was all these tonal differences between the oh, the sounds. Right. And I just had to kind of like standardize the whole thing. So it sounded like it was just all of a piece, you know. Yeah. And um, so so I did that with the English language. And then we 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 translated it into f what we call figs, which is French, Italian, German and Spanish. Uh, and also port Portuguese, and I don't know if we did Portuguese for that. Um, so I had to take all their voice assets and kind of do the same thing with that, make sure it was all working. So that was, uh, it was quite an undertaking. I was there for maybe the tail end of, of Pandemic's uh, existence, and then right around November is when it all got shut down. Yeah. Um, when, when it comes to Obsidian, I, I always ask the patrons to give me questions and you got a lot. So I tried to parse them out so that we don't cause you to like lose your voice like a bad voice actor. So <laughs> okay. the, uh, one of the questions, though, that I did want to ask is, you know, especially because people are inter very interested in this industry. 
what was like the interview process for like, let's say you can give an example of any of these companies or not even the interview process, but like, well, yeah, the hiring process, interview process. What was it like for any of these companies that you've worked for? So I've got an interesting story about Obsidian. I mean, and I can, and I'll, I'll definitely give you that, that. So the night before I came down with food poisoning. Before the Obsidian one? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. I'm not, I'm sorry. That's funny, but it's, that's horrible. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it was, it, I have to look back and laugh because it's like, I can't believe, I mean, so, you know, it was, I was preparing all week. I was like, you know, you know, really, really excited about this interview. And then, you know, around nine o'clock the night before, you know, interview was around 10 o'clock in the morning the next day. I just, you know, I started feeling like my heart rate was, was, was raised. And then, right. you know, all the symptoms of food poisoning. Oh man. And it just dawned on me, like at around one o'clock in the morning, I was like, I can't believe this, but I am like full on in the midst of food poisoning right now. <laughs> and, um, oh. so I dragged myself out of the house, you know, I was nauseous. It was horrible. And I took myself to, um, to the ER and I was like, I have an interview <laughs> And I'm dehydrated and things Fix are really me, bad people. right now. <laughs> yes. And they, so I was basically like on a gurney, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. for like, you know, until like nine o'clock in the morning with an IV in my arm, you know, passed out in an ER in Los Angeles. And, <laughs> That's great, man. And then like, I went home, took a shower, got dressed and like made my way to the interview and I just had to suck it up. You know, and just pretend like everything was fine. Did you, uh, when you went in, were you like, uh, people, if I look like death, there's a reason? Or were you just pretend, or did you just pretend you were fine? I pretended, I just put on my best poker face. Exactly. And acted like everything was great. Exactly. You know? And inside I was like, oh my God. If you guys smell hospital on me, there's a reason, yeah. but we'll discuss it later. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, when it comes to the, the hiring process for like an obsidian, did you do a demo? How did you, how did you go about that? Yeah. So, um, the, uh, audio director at the time, uh, Scott Lawler, he's over at blizzard right now. Yeah, he's actually right. worked on, uh, overwatch. Mm -hmm. Amazing job. Anyway, sorry. I have to just say that. Oh, no, feel you know, free. Yeah, definitely. Um, so he, uh, you know, I got in touch with him through a job fair. So mm -hmm. once pandemic shut down, um, you know, EA wanted to do right by all the people that were affected by that. So they set up all these job fairs and they invited um, uh, recruiters from from other companies and right. just for the people affected by the studio closure. And, um, you know, uh, the HR guy, Jim Rivers, um, he was there and I just kind of gave him my my resume and I, I didn't really think too much of it. I was just, you know, very hopeful, but, you know, I wasn't really sure that anything would come of it. And, you know, I got a call back and um, they they asked me if I wanted to come in for an in-person interview. So the first step was I came. Yeah. So I, I, they called me over and we had lunch. And that was the first part of the process was just like, hey, you know, can we even just get along with you? Exa as a human being? Exactly. Socially. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's really important, you very know, because much. you you know, the games are hard. Anything, anything that you do, you know, you, the team that the people that you work with, you need to be able to, you know, hopefully be able to work with them. Right. And so, so there was that first step. And then, um, you know, so then yeah, afterwards, uh, you know, after, I guess I passed that, they, they sent over a test and it was a, um, oddly enough, it was a, sound replacement so they sent me some video footage of diablo 3 gotcha. um without the audio and they they told me you know this we want you to replace the sound and basically pretend like you are doing the sound for everything that you see in the game and uh, and do it like that so that included like footsteps mm -hmm. fully ui sounds Im ambient sounds uh, emitters, those are things like torches or things right. that are sort of like pinpoint position on screen, abilities, creature sounds, the whole whole nine yard, everything except for music. And uh, so, you know, basically, usually what they do is they give you a test and then they give you a certain amount of time to complete the test, mm -hmm. which is kind of part of the test in a way. It's like, so what can you do? What's your work time? ethic like? And yes, yeah, right. Yeah, no, and, you know, you know, are you able to do it on a deadline? You know, those kinds of, you get some information from that as well. So I did the test. I sent that in, they evaluated and I guess they liked the test. Uh, and then they brought me in for a more formal interview where they bring in. So it's like you sit in a conference room 
you you talk to other members of the team, uh, producers, mm -hmm. um, some of the owners of the company. Chris Parker, one of the owners of Obsidian, was at, at my interview. Um, members of other projects, so project leaders from other projects would would sit in and you know one pick your brain about stuff, and um, and then yeah, and then afterward it was like about a week or so. Like I think the whole process took maybe a month. Uh -huh. Um, sometimes it takes longer. Some companies are a little bit slower. They've got more, like more levels to yeah. sort of process information yeah. through. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it went for, for Obsidian. And I think that's, that's fairly consistent from, from company to company. Yeah. It's um, funny. We, uh, I just interviewed, uh, uh Alexa, he does the, uh, dead rising four, uh, soundtrack and okay. it, it's funny. And uh, the reason why I didn't say his last name is because I apologize people. His last name is incredibly difficult for me to apologize and I don't have it written down. Um, okay. uh, I just did an interview with him, which I'll post soon. And he said the exact same thing you did. His job, uh, interview was basically taking mass effect one and the trailer and redoing the entire trailer in whatever way he wanted and the uh the, and then giving it to the company and the company was like yeah. okay we like this you know and, and this is sort of how you do it that does appear this replacement kind of job test does seem to appear a lot and i think that's a really intelligent way of doing it because it also shows if you can capture the theme capture the presence of all the characters what exactly you're trying to do and 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 offer a good i mean that's a lot of different stuff you can do and with sounds do you find now that you're doing composing and you've done the sound design, do you find that when it comes to, like if I said, hey, I'm going to challenge you to do two trailers that have already been released, Overwatch, let's say, or something, would you find sound or music more difficult, do you think, if I said to, to, to do one of those? I, I think I'm lucky because I've, I've had a lot of exposure to On doing both. Both, right. Yeah, um, definitely my focus has been more on music lately. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, and I look forward to any, any opportunity that I can go back to doing sounds because they sort of, both disciplines sort of cross feed into one For another. Sure, and, right. and a lot of the techniques that I've been applying with music. So, you know, for me personally, I do a lot of personal study. So I'm constantly on forums, industry forums, music forums, sound forums, right. reading articles, watching videos, just listening to sort of the best people in the world talk about what they do and, you know, trying to tease out little, little pointers. And, um, you know, and I, and I've, I've done a lot of that and I've been able to sort of take a little, get a little more tricks in my bag and apply that to the way that I do music. Because a, a lot of times I also have to mix my music. That's not also very common. You, there's, gotcha. there's, it's also very common for folks to write the music and then hand it off. Mm -hmm. And, and I actually would love to do that because I don't think that I'm a very good mixer, but it's just sort of, a, you know, sort of a necessity at the moment, you know. And so, you know, not only am I worrying about the musical content, but I also have to worry about how it sounds, too, and if it's polished enough. And so it's great because I can take, you know, I do a lot of research and because I'm very self-conscious about my mixing abilities, I, I just really don't think I'm very good at it, you know. <laughs> and you know, so I'm like constantly searching the internet for, for information and, um, you know, and I've been able to get some really good, some good stuff, some really useful pointers. Right. And when I go back and I do sounds, um, I'm able to, I'm able to take that experience and bring it back into the sounds. And, you know, and I find that my sound design capabilities are also sort of, while it's, you know, I think the mixing side of it actually helps me to sort of maintain my sound design jobs, if that makes sense. No, it does. And I think that, you know, it's one of the things that I've covered in, we do podcasts on this a lot of times. It's one of the things I've covered is, you know, a lot of people don't understand that an OST, for example, is not what you hear in the game half the time because you have prompts and you have, you know, you have layering. And and, and uh, so understanding all of those different aspects of how you put a soundtrack together, understanding what sounds are playing during that soundtrack, what's the character doing and getting all that stuff together. Um, it, it's cool to hear that somebody like yourself is still learning. It's actually a question I had, which is pretty much what you just answered, which is how do you go about still learning, writing your own stuff, uh, working on your own things, experimenting when you're in crunch mode? Uh, but I'm assuming you probably just at that time, you probably just have to turn it off for a bit. Um, yeah. what, do you, what do you find if somebody's out there, like, let's say there's a, a person who's watching this and they're like, man, I would love to get into Let's discuss sound first, because I do have some really interesting questions about sound itself um, before we jump into Pillars 2 and stuff. If somebody wanted to get into sound, what yeah. do you think would be good advice for them? 
besides having a good ear. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and that helps for sure. Um, and you can learn that skill. Yeah, um, right. That's definitely t teachable. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, there, there, there's two camps, I think, that about, you know, going to the whole like in, inner talent. There's certainly people that have a natural talent for things. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that if you truly want something and you and you're you question your inner talent mm -hmm. that you you definitely through practice can achieve you can you can obtain whatever skills that you want to do. And making sounds and writing music is just a skill mm -hmm. that you need to work on, just like anything else. Um and so, you know, if if anyone is sort of on the fence on whether they can whether they feel like they can do it, you know, if, if I can if I could do it, you know, I mean, anyone I, mean, I don't know what comparison that I'm trying to make there, but anyone can do it. I think that's the point is that if you, if this if this is something that you that resonates with you and you really can't imagine yourself doing anything else, you should just go full in and make it happen. Um, so there's a lot of determination. I think that that's the first thing. Sure. Um, you need that determination. You know, you need to be hungry. You need to accept no other alternative for your life. You need to be pretty stubborn with yourself. Right. And sometimes that comes at great sacrifice, personal sacrifice, um, doing time, what you love. Family, yeah. Time, family, time especially. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it requires lots of that and money. Yeah. You know, um, you know I, I, it took me five or six years you know, of just being hopeful and just reaching out to people and cultivating my skills and, you know, rejection after rejection after rejection. It's very disheartening. And, you know, I wasn't making good money and, um, you know, and, and, and it was a struggle. It was a struggle for all of those very human reasons that we all sort of encounter on a day to day basis, you know. Um, Are there any forums or any particular uh, classes or anything that you like? that you've seen and you've been like, you know what, I would love to suggest this to somebody. Yeah. And, and the truth is, is that every time I get, you know, someone approaches me like, how do you break in? Sure. Um, you know, the first thing I would say is, you know, don't wait for someone to make your, your opportunities for you. Right. Make your own opportunities. And then even though you haven't worked on a really big game or whatever, um, because you have tried to make your own experiences happening, you're going to be a step above or step ahead of someone who is waiting for them to just sure. get, get discovered or whatever it is. So uh, one of the things I always recommend for folks is get involved with mods. Um, that's how that's I started. A, yes. Very. Yeah. Is it really? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate, the, uh, when they started getting the, uh, the ability to mod Baldur's Gate, I started making music for it. And, uh, is that right? Yeah, and that was that was. I mean, it's like that was the first. Uh, now we're talking ancient, brother. But uh, I think I was using Magic's music. Uh, it's a German. I think that's a German company and their DAW. I mean, we're talking ancient stuff because uh, I had no money, you know. So it's like the forty nine dollar yeah. DAW <laughs> instead yeah. of instead of something that was like you know Cubase or something. But yeah, right. I mean, that is absolutely an excellent point. Is that mods are a great place to start? Yeah, they are. I mean the. What else, where else are you going to get the opportunity to work with other folks right. who do art and programming and design? Um, you know, the, the tricky bit with mods is, you know, is finding a project where everyone is committed to seeing it through. Um, but you know what, just I, for me, it's like a numbers game. Just keep, keep Throwing doing it. Out it there, right. Know? Yeah, just you know, just keep doing it. Keep getting involved with projects. See if there's a mobile developer who you know. Mm, right, good idea. You know, yeah, you know, just, there's a lot of folks out there who are when they think of sound, they're like, uh, hmm, I'll just search for some sound effects online and you know <laughs> use those. And then you come along and you say, hey, you yeah. know, I'd be willing to help you out. You know, um, it's pretty contentious, like about the whole, like whether or not you should work for free kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I understand that people don't want to promote working for free because it, you know, in a, in a way it devalues, um, folks, you know, it devalues what people do. But I think when you're really starting out early, um, you know, just get your day job, make sure that your, your financial situation is, good, you know, that you feel that you're at least bringing in some money. And yeah, at night, just kill yourself and work for free, you know, work all night, whatever it takes. Um, and just get yourself out there. And 
hopefully if you keep when you keep doing that over time i maybe this is really bad advice i don't know no, that's but, actually excellent. It's funny you mentioned two things. One, Jesse Harlan, who did Mafia 3, we interviewed him. And prior to the discussion, we talked for an hour and afterwards we talked and, you know, there was some NDA stuff. But one of the things that came up is something you just said, which is that, you know, you will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Like he was like, you got to throw some shit out there. You have to. You And especially in music and especially in video games with the high turnover, you can't really ever, I mean, of maybe Obsidian, even though, you know, you guys have had some issues in the past financially, every yeah. company it isn't really sticking around for very long. You know, EA will come in and buy a company and then say, ah, we're not happy. And you'll be like, oh, I just thought I had a solid job and I don't. So throwing those things out there and having them. But he also said something which was very, uh, which was actually mimicked by David uh, Bateson yesterday, Agent 47. We interviewed him and he said the same thing, which is that, Sometimes internships or working for free is just it, it's it's really just a longer hiring process or a long it's it's just a sample of your work and a lot of us like to think of samples of our work as being something we can easily do. Sometimes an internship is and and I know that you're right that people don't want to do that but let's be honest the more people who don't want to do that, the less people doing it. And sometimes that makes the difference because if you are an excellent person in a field that is small and no one else is there you may find yourself having some opportunities that no one else has. And Absolutely. I, I know a voice actor right now who is doing voice work. And that is because they, they were very cool with doing particular things for at the time for like mods and stuff like that. And, and they got picked up by a big company. So yeah, yeah that, those are that's to, very good advice. Yeah. You, you need to take the initiative, you yeah. know, um, and it's hard because right. where do you begin? <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. It's, 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 that's, that's for sure. It's wide open. Um, so discussing general work, if we're in the midst of pillars, let's say pillars one, because pillars two hasn't got to this moment, I'm sure, but pillars one, you're deep in it. You're on your 300th day. How do you, how would your day be? Like, what would your day be? 300th day. So it's a pretty busy time. Yeah. Um, so come in, check in with, uh, with everyone else on the audio team. Um, you know, make sure that they they've got a good plan for the day see if they need anything from me you know mm -hmm. my, my job is a facilitator for them i you know if they're blocked if they're not sure about something i help connect the dots for them gotcha um you know maybe they're stuck on something they need my advice uh check my email you know try to get as much of the sort of administrative completely stuff. ignore jeremy's email a couple times <laughs> i'm just joking yeah. <laughs> Ins i know I'm inside so joke sorry. guys I'm very inside that. I... inside joke we were joking about it prior to the podcast <laughs> no it was actually more about the 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 the, uh, the skype thing so you you do that you do you check your emails and then so you i would say then for your day what is it like only three fourths or a half is actually the yeah. nuts and bolts yeah yeah it, i you know and and then, it, then by the time that's all done, it's like lunchtime, right? <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. You know, I'll just sit sit at my desk and like, you know, and I'll watch one of your re reviews or something, you know, and hang out. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, so around one o'clock. Um, you know, <laughs> you get to uh, sit down and actually work. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, I mean, on an average day, I get, you know, my, my door is sort of a revolving door. I get a lot of, you know, s small questions right. and. Um, but you know, especially when we're getting close to the end of the project, I, I don't have a choice, but to sort of, this is going to sound really bad, but I have to sort of push all that stuff aside and sure. really filter out the stuff that's very critical. Um, and, um, you know, then it's, then it's really very, very focused, you know, where I come in, I try to just take care of all the stuff and, you know, put a sign on my door, please don't disturb, send me an email. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, just, you know, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff, there's meetings, there's bugs that come in. So, you know, not only do I write the music, but I implement the music right. too. So I'm getting feedback back from, the, from our QA team or from other people on the team saying, oh, this doesn't quite work, you know, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, um, you know, and, uh, you know, that, that's kind of my day, you know, I used to have a nice little routine that, it, that I tried to start and it just fell by the wayside. <laughs> where I would come in and I would do a little bit of like piano sight reading or something like that. And, you know, I don't, I don't really get to do that a whole lot. And so it was very nice, you know, and I it was sort of a slow, 
luxurious start to the day. Right. And yeah, that didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah. All, all those plans sort of go away, especially when everybody else is involved. Um, let's say, uh, especially when talking to different composers, they all have a slightly different answer to this. I think in the end, the job uh, steps are probably somewhat the same. But when working on music itself, let's say somebody comes to you and says, Pillars one for sure, because, you know, you didn't you didn't have a sequel at that time. If Pillars one comes up and they say, we want to do this game, they sort of explain it to you or you're in there in the first initial you know, discussions. Do you come up with an instrument palette in your brain of some of like your overall thoughts and feelings? Or is it more experimental where maybe you see storyboards or you see, um, you know, I know actually, I think it was Blizzard who did 3D printing of models and showed them to people to like make their brains. I think that was Blizzard. It might not have been, but to make them sort of go, okay, you know, I get an idea of what this is now in physical space. Mm -hmm. Do you come up with those prior? How, how would you s describe your workflow for that? Yeah, actually, you know what? That does happen to me very frequently. Um, when we're very early on in a project, mm -hmm. um, just, I don't know, maybe it's my, the way my mind works or something, but when someone talks about a story or a character mm -hmm. or a, a a world environment or something like that i'm able to you know the more i hear someone talk about those things and the more i sort of we sort of go back and forth on that i start to form a picture of of what that might sound like um and um and then you know a lot of times it just sort of incubates Mm -hmm. in my mind just because the the arc of development is so yeah right you know, yeah it takes a while for things to pick up speed it's more actually like this it's kind of like yeah because once you know, they do so you're screwed but you are. but it's very slow there at the starting it's it's slow in the beginning so you have a lot of time to sort of think about mm -hmm. things and i i find that the more that i let it incubate and sort of stew inside my mind the the better it is because you know, then I've lived with it and I really understand it. So, so yeah, when I, I'll see a concept, some concept art mm -hmm. and, you know, so is your brain here, already making like, is it already, already doing going. a theme or is it just the instruments or are you actually hearing like the Imperial Death March? If you see a Star Destroyer, is it that, is it that, um, developed? Sometimes. Um, wow. Very so, cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it, sometimes it takes a, a minute for it to really kick in, you mm -hmm. know? So, so once, once I see that image, my mind is just automatically sort of processing, processing it in the background. And here's a good example, like with tyranny, uh -huh. um, I, uh, so the, the, the title theme that you hear when you boot the game up, um, I was laying in bed actually. And, you know, I was thinking about the game and I knew that event, you know, it was coming up to where I needed to sort of shift my focus over to tyranny and start working on that. And, um, I was laying in bed, ready to go to sleep. And I was thinking about the game, thinking about when I'm going to start, you know, and suddenly just notes and instruments just popped in my mind. And so a lot of times what I do when that happens is I, I leave the room and I, get out my phone and I just put the memo, the, the voice recorder on and I'll sing into the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And, and so what I did was I did that and I, I put it up on Google cloud or wherever. And mm -hmm. then like, you know, three months later, time to write the theme for, for tyranny. I brought that in and I, I kid you not the, what I sang and what I described, you know, my past self described to future myself um, is pretty close to, to what you actually hear in the game. Okay, well, the, uh, we're, you know, I was going to separate Tyranny from some of the other discussion, but I have to ask you something. Tyranny's main theme, I had a long discussion on a podcast about that main theme for one particular reason. And this is probably me thinking too much into it, by the way. Okay. If you take the picture of, the, of Tyranny, if you take the... Um, the the box art with the yeah. with the um, the dudes on the left and your little character on the right is am I going crazy? I swear to God, if you listen to the music while you're looking at that picture, some of those instruments represent the dudes on the left. And then there's a solo violin that starts. I even took a note. There's a solo violin. This is by far, by the way, the the main theme is literally one of my favorite songs of all time. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of shiver right now. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, so I wrote this and I said. The main theme, well, I said it's insane. Horns and violins battling out. And that was true. At the starting, there's horns, violins. It's like this epic, like, who can be cooler? But then, and, and so my brain was like, oh, weird. If I listen to this left to right, and I look at the picture left to right, 
right about where I expected. My br I looked at the little character and all of a sudden you have a violin that starts and it's not a solo violin. There's still an accompany. There's still some stuff in the background. Was that on purpose or was that or was that I mean, is that completely like, no, that's not at all what I was thinking. Or were you at least putting those characters in that main theme? I love your interpretation of that. I think that that's so awesome, man. Um, but no. OK, well, let, let me <laughs> let me let me rephrase that. Not as specifically as you said. OK, gotcha. But pretty close, actually. Gotcha. Um, so what the way that I approach music. Maybe this is going to sound really cheesy, but nothing. So it's it's art, man. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Um, so what I always try to do is imagine. You know, so that so tyranny is the story of the fate binder and Kairos right. and the, you know, the archons and the tears and, you know, um, you know, the, this war and, um, you know, very, very substantive narrative. Right. Um, and I try to take a step back from that and I try to think. OK, so there's all these main players and they're doing their things and, and the world is being shaped around their actions. Right. But let's pretend for a moment that, you know, that I am a father and I have a family that I'm trying to protect mm -hmm. and I have little children that I'm trying to raise and trying to, you know, have hopes and dreams for. And I'm just a person in this world. Right. And so and and what I try to do is is try to hit it from that angle where I where I'm where it's like, what is it like to live in this world where Kairos has taken over everything and the fate binder is going against him and there's all these edicts going on? That's yeah, a rebellious child. Funny you mentioned family because you are a rebellious child in that in that game. Right. Huh. Yeah. That's yes. Very cool. Yeah. So that theme what is the awesome. music represents is um, is sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go um, for it. OK, uh, so what the for me, the music does represent. So it's like these like it's like these thrusting chords like. Bum, right. Yeah. Bum, yeah it's, all, it's awesome. Right. And um, and you can you can think of that as like these two sides sort of clashing sure. together. Right. Um, and, and, and it's, it's not like it's this complex melody, right? It's just this big chord followed by yep. another big chord. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. I love it. And they're both sort of like, they're like me. And then the other one's like, no, me, you know right. what I mean? And they're both vying for your attention. Yeah. And, um, and so that represents sort of these monolithic sort of like, you know, armies and this, this huge concept of Kairos, you know? Um, and then the melody the, is that humanity, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, okay, you know, there's these opposing sides, but, but there's people that are involved here. It's not just about Kairos and, and th those who oppose him, you right. know, it's about, you know, you know, and, and, and in, and in tyranny, you can be one of those monolithic sides, or you can sure. try to be a human and say, wait a second, this is put the brakes on. Yeah. You know? And so I think you, it's, I think what you keyed into is, is, is pretty perceptive. Yeah. Actually. It, it, dude, it's, uh, it, I, you know, each, especially with tracks, it, depending on the game, you never quite know, uh, what the, what the, what the artist planned versus what you hear because de depending on the programming, uh, behind the scenes. And, you know, I, I admit when I opened up the theme, uh, opened up the main screen, I didn't sit on that for very long. Right. I mean, that's that's not usual. And it I've always felt a, a little bit uh, almost angry that that's how menu music is usually treated. You know, people menu music is to be skipped through whatever. And so, yeah, that while I was reviewing the game, I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably check this out. And I listened to that theme. and I was like, wait, what? Is I mean, it, and it was probably one of those moments where, you know, <laughs> I don't know, too much LSD, but where <laughs> things connect and you're like, and, and no, I don't do LSD people. But there's two. There were so many things that connected. And I was like, what the f like? Did he look at this picture? It was dude. It was brilliant. And and that is a that is a, a fantastic theme also, because 
talking about pillars, by the way, and the main theme there. And it's so thematically different. And it's and and by the way, in, in the main theme for pillars, and I don't think this is on purpose because it barely pops up. There's a couple times, and it might be because I'm playing Conan. There's a couple very Conan-ish um, like twists that go on in that main theme of pillars, but it's so different than tyranny. When when it comes to those, do you take you, you obviously take the psychology in uh, to make the game? So with tyranny, you knew it was these, I guess you could call them bad guys, and so that created that idea. Um, have you, when it comes to the the challenging of like those two themes in in that main in that main thing for tyranny, do you ever try to experiment with sounds that are or, or with themes that are a little more unique? Because we do get that a lot, where you get the bum 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 bum. Have you? Are, are is there a track that you're particularly like really uh, happy about on tyranny or on pillars that you were like, this is different. This is not what I, uh, what I think people might have expected for this time. Yeah, uh, actually, the the main theme for Pillars is actually that exactly. Gotcha. A lot I mean, of flute. And, Love it. Nice. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I I knew going into it that what I wanted to do is not what people would expect. Right. Because if you remember back to. Um, to the main screen for Baldur's Gate or or the those games, they're very bombastic. You they know? are, yes, yeah. And um, what dun 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 dun, dun right? And um, you know, the what we were doing visually um, and in terms of the story for the for pillars, it departed from yeah um, from. Baldur's Gate in a lot of ways, you know, Baldur's Gate is sort of a palette of browns and grays. That's the way that I am remember it at it's least. Very, I mean, yeah, it's very natural colored. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's not to say that the whole game is like that, but you know, when, when you boot up the game and you see that skull with, you know, and it's all brown uh, and it, 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 you're right on those colors. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and, and then what we were doing with, with pillars, with the green Audra and, you know, this sort of, you know, peaceful looking ruins, you know, that was sort of parallaxing back and forth, um, you know, mm -hmm. and just the way that we were doing things with the world and things we were doing with color and, and, and the narrative and the world that we were building, it didn't feel right to me to, to do that bombastic theme. Um, and, uh, and and I was worried about it actually. You know, there was, I think, a lot of folks' initial reaction was, "Hey, that's not what I remember the IE game sounding like." Oh, and really? um, yeah, oh yeah, uh, there was a lot of reaction like that. It was just kind of like, "Hey, um, I would expect, you know, the 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 main theme to sort of, you know, kind of hit you like the moment you boot up the, this the thing, you we're right into the thick I gotcha. of it. I gotcha. I gotcha. You get the, yeah. you get the point of the music, and you know, the the pillars theme is sort of a slow build, right? And there's this this arc, and you sort of need to consider it as all as oh, as one thing, one full piece, right? Yeah. Instead of just like here's the little sound bite, you know, that you're always going to remember. Not to say that that's a bad approach. I'm just saying that that's not the way that the pillars theme works. There, it's very surreal too. There's uh, uh, later in in pillars. There's a couple crystalline, like very like crystal clear sounds that I really like. But in in that original theme, especially the flute, it, I don't know, that, that theme is just really good. And I do like that you can come away, like let's say you bought the, uh, the, the package and you got your pillars and you got your tyranny as one in one. It, it would be so great because when you do boot them both up, there's tyranny, man. You're like, dude, I know what this game, like I got it. And there's a, there's a surrealness to pillars as a game, even what's going on. And, and it, it is different. And so that, I think that nails it. I think the main theme for both of those games are, are some of the best themes. Do you find main themes more difficult or, or do you find them easier actually than let's say battle theme number one kind of thing? They're difficult for sure. Yeah. Um, it's the thing it's probably, well, you hear it every single time you boot up the game. So, you know, people it has have to, be to good. like it. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Like, it's got to be pretty decent, <laughs> you know? Uh, and it's the first impression. Right. And so it's got a lot of visibility in that way. And it, and it can really be a turnoff for some folks. I know that there's some folks who just really don't like the Pillars theme or the Tyranny for theme. Sure. Um, and that's fair because music is a very... Uh, 
it's a very subjective thing. People sure. have their own tastes, but, but, um, but yeah, it's hard. There's, there's a lot of pressure, you know, you're, you're basically, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overstepping my bounds here, but the way that I look at that music is that is the musical representation of the entire game. No, no, know? no, it is. Yeah. I don't think that's uh dead rising. We were yesterday when I was doing the interview, uh, he had the same issue you did. He wrote a song called coldest day of the year and he, he wanted to inspire Bjork. Uh, in the singing, but have it be this evil Christmas carol. And he discussed how worried he was, somewhat like you said, where it's like some people wouldn't like it. Luckily, they most loved it. But um, I think there's a stress there for you guys, because I remember that song for that game, and it will always be the song for Dead Rising and um, Dead Rising 4. And when it comes to Pillars, when it comes to Tyranny, those are those are the representation. I mean, you can like a certain track in those games. But and even if you don't spend all day in the menu, for example, Mass Effect, you hear it all the time. People Mass Effect one when uh, Jack Wall, I think, did Mass Effect one. The synth at the beginning is just like I mean, it's just this crunchy 1970 Flash Gordon kind of thing. And you're like, whoa, what? This is like nothing I've heard before. And that moment is what you remember you know, from that point on, except the menu music was pretty good. Um so when it comes to working on these and, and would you say, do you get to work on a theme, not a theme, let's go to tracks themselves. Do you get to work on a track from start to finish uh, and then go to the next? Or do you find yourself like I've got six tracks and and one is 30 percent done, the other 70? Like, how, how do you parse out your work? That's ha that happens sometimes. Um, you know, I like to just sort of be done you know and just kind of <laughs> right, move on right sometimes i can't like sometimes i'll just get stuck and it's like you know i'm kind of beating my head against something that i'm not really that happy with and you know combat music is like that for me especially it's 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 tricky because it can be really annoying to listen to um if done improperly and uh you know i'm still learning with that for sure but um you know uh yeah yeah it, it if, if I'm not feeling it, it's better to just move on, you know, um, leave it aside, come back to it and, and wrap it up later. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of music on pillars, um, like dungeon music and stuff like that. That was sort of, I did sort of something very rough and then I kind of tossed it in the game and it was very clearly not finished, you mm -hmm. know, and, and wherever, whenever you'd play the game, you'd be like, ah, oh, this is really nice. And then you go to the dungeon. It's like, Ugh, this is uh Yeah let's not go in the dungeon anymore. Let maybe turn down the volume a little bit, right. you know, um, put some negative and, space in there, like yeah, for so five that, minutes. <laughs> we don't need music here. <laughs> exactly. <you know? laughs> this is poignant, man. You don't need music right now. Just <laughs> let it go on its own. That's, that's actually a very good point. Um, how, how long do you have? Cause I don't want to hold you over. Oh no. Uh, you're good. Fine. Okay. So, um, so when, you know, when you're working on stuff and you first come up with an idea, you've already said you use your cell phone, which it's funny how technology, like everybody I talk to now, except Austin Wintery had said he still, and he had this huge folder. And he's like, dude, I'll just, I have this paper, pen and paper. He's very analog. Uh, when, when an idea pops up, do you find yourself sitting down at the computer? Let's say you're at work or are you an analog person as well? Are you writing it out? How do you sort of, how does the initial thing begin? Let's say if you don't have your cell phone, how would you how would you go about that? I would have to do paper. Luckily, my cell phone has always been kind of at hand. Um, so you use it like paper. You do. You, I do use yeah. it like because the thing is, is that usually when an idea comes and strikes me, it's it's at the worst opportunity possible. You know? <laughs> right, so, right. Family dinner. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, hold on one second. You know, I'm driving and I got to pull over and you know <laughs> sing into the thing. You yeah, know, can't text um, and drive. Yeah, I, that's and that's kind of the part of the problem is that I, I just don't I I have to capture that lightning in a bottle, you know, right. and um, right, you know, usually it's it's crazy. I don't know what how it works out this way, but ideas either come sort of half baked or they come like fully realized, you know, and I know what instruments to use, what kind of textures I want, like oh, wow. everything. Gotcha. And um you know, the voice thing is good because I can talk about how I want it to sound, what you know, I can sing the melodies that I'm hearing, I can sing the counterpoint that I'm hearing, um, you know, so that's, capture that's, that inspiration right then is what you're saying, like that yeah. instant inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like two ways that I work. So I'll either it'll either be that way where I luck out and it sort of just pops in my mind or I have to sit down at the keyboard and sort of just <laughs> sort of grind it out, you know, right. Um, I do a lot of improvisation where I just hit record and I'm just trying to, you know, 
think about what this music is for, what purpose it serves, you know, what the environment is like, what the, sure. the, the context is. And I'll just, I'll just noodle, you know, um, and record myself for hours, you know, and uh, pan for gold after that, you know, yeah. hopefully there's something in it that's <laughs> yeah, good. Exactly. Man, I hope that eight hours was worth something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, when, you know, usually it's not like verbatim what, you know, like there'll just be something in there and I'll hear a, a little snippet of it that you like. A little snippet, yeah. And then you just develop that. That's very cool. Yeah, I like the idea, though, that sometimes afterwards you're like, man. I hope that was worth it because <laughs> that yeah. was a long time, especially when you have so few hours sometimes to work. Um, yep. People had asked me uh, to discuss, uh, and I don't know how much you can, about New Vegas. Okay, yeah, so, I'm happy to. Yeah. What did you do on New Vegas itself? Sound design. Uh, Sound design, uh, all of it? No, no. Uh, there was there's three of us, four of us actually working on the project. Mm -hmm. um, two two full-time sound designers, me, uh, another guy named Andrew Deering. He's working at... Amazon Game Studios now. Oh, cool. uh, and then Scott Lawler, who was the the audio director of the project. Right. Um, and he uh, he's over at Blizzard now. And Mikey Dowling, who um, who's now our PR guy, mm -hmm. uh, he helped out with a lot of the VO wrangling. And now he's the PR guy. PR guy. Oh, that's now. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. When you were doing New Vegas, that which is even though it's a, a you know it's a different viewpoint and everything. Did you find like was that refreshing for you to I mean, was it was it uh, was it very difficult? Like just describe like what it's like in a in a day, let's say, for sound design for New Vegas. Were you guys, for example, getting fresh sounds that were original or were you guys using like internal studio sounds? How, how exactly do you get sound work into New Vegas? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing was like. You know, we were just tickled pink that we were working on a Fallout game. You know? right, yeah, um, celebrate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been playing Bethesda games for a very long time, and I've anytime they release anything, I'll play the heck out of it. Right. You know, and uh, I I just love that stuff. And so that was just a, an incredible honor, I think, for everyone on the team. And we took that very seriously. You know, we we wanted to be able to live up to what we saw was this very you know sort of big expectation. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, for, for us in terms of like what sounds we used and, you know, there was a lot of new material. Um, a lot of it was custom recorded. Um, you know, we go out into the, to, to the desert or, sure. um, you know, Andrew and act is funny. Yeah. So in Freetown, Freetown, it's, it's Freetown. Uh, you mean Megaton? Megaton? No, not Megaton. The Freetown. The, oh, sorry. The, uh, New Vegas. Yeah. I don't New remember Vegas. the name of that. I don't yeah, so that. the the sur I'm sorry, I'm. It's been a very long time since I've worked. Oh on no, the that's game, so totally fine, remember. totally fine. Um, the 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 sort of urban city outside the walls of Vegas. I think mm -hmm. it's I think it's Freetown. Um, I need to I need to know now. I'm sorry. Yeah, Let me it, just it's a, now it's a professional thing. You're like, yeah, I, it I, is. I, like, damn it, I worked on it. I need to know the name knowing. of the town. Uh, Fallout New Vegas. Free city locations freeside freeside was, gotcha you were close. close very close um freeside so um what they did uh what uh scott and Ad andrew did is mm -hmm. they they went to a, a bar um in some beach town close close to uh, irvine which is where the obsidian office is and they just waited until last call uh -huh. And then they waited until everyone was just streaming out of the bar, you know, sort of, you know, kind of hammered. And um, they recorded them. And they so what they were doing, they were they were recording the sounds of the of the people just being sort of, you know, clumsy belligerent. and belligerent. Yeah. And it was like it was like um, bouncing off of the walls. And you got kind of got this natural echo right. of these people talking and it sounded great. Um, and we used that as sort of one of the, the ambient beds ambient. of Freeside. And it just makes the place feel like there's someone in an alley over there, you know, up to no good, you know. Um, and there's just tons of examples like that. Um, the stuff that I worked on primarily was the ambient environment sounds. So one of the things that I did was, um, you know, we wanted the, the, the we wanted New, we wanted New Vegas to feel, uh, and the Mojave Desert to feel real. Mm -hmm. You know, 
because when you're, you know, when you're sneaking around at night, you know, and there's a super mutant over the hill, you know what I mean? Or, uh, you know, rad, you know, scorpion or whatever, you know, you want to give people that feeling like they're actually there, you right. know? Right. And so we spent a lot of time on just making so that those sounds that you hear, not because of an action, but just because of the world doing its own thing, right. um, had a life of their own. And so one of the things that we ended up doing was, so in games, we have lots of props, you know, so like if you're walking through the Mojave Desert, you'll see like a, a signpost mm -hmm. or, you know, a dilapidated uh, a electrical tower or, you a know, swing a, set. there's always a swing set, swing set, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, a, you know, burned down house, you know, right. little right. dirt pile, little mud pile, whatever. And so we had a way of attaching little sounds to those things so that when you would walk by, you would hear the dilapidated electrical tower sort of groaning as if it were about to collapse at any moment. And, you know, we were able to do that with a lot of stuff in the game. So a lot of the emergent sounds that you have are these sounds that are attached to these, these emitters, basically. Gotcha. Yeah. And so that designers can sort of place these things around wherever they wanted to. And our sounds would just kind of get automatically carry over into that. Yes. Oh, very cool. When so it was kind of crazy because I got to the point where like, you know, I would be playing the game looking for these props, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then like the 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 lines between working on Fallout New Vegas looking for props to attach to attach sounds to and the real world started to blur for me and I'd be driving and I'd be looking around and be like Oh, that billboard would be great to attach a sound to. And then I'd have to remind myself, like, that's not this real. is not the game, dude. You're not <laughs> <laughs> Step away. It's like it's yeah. like an artist who's like, uh, I'm gonna be a dick in this movie, so I gotta be a dick in real life. It's like right. nah, don't go too far. Um, yeah, right, right. When... I, I had to I had to realize that I couldn't attach a sound to my toilet. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> when it comes to ambient, which is something that I mention in every game, because to me, more so, I know this sounds weird, but music sometimes, especially in some games, depending on how it plays, is really important. But amb ambient sounds and that, I, you know, I, I think in reviews, I usually just say whether it, you know, whether it uh, solidifies the environment or whether it sort of grounds you in it. There's a there's this undercurrent that needs to always be there in like a city, let's say. Yeah. So when you find yourself doing that, one of the things this is going to sound very nitpicky on my part. But one of the things that bothers me, for example, is there'll be a game that will have like dogs barking in the background. Same four dog sounds 45 times looped. And there's no dogs you ever see in the game. When you're doing like, let's say, New Vegas, were you guys very um, aside from the emitters, by the way, because because that's just awesome. But aside from those and just the, the 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 static stuff you guys were recording, did you guys try to make sure at least somewhat that things matched? Because have you ever walked into a game world and you're like, it sounds really busy. There's four fucking NPCs here. That's it. Yeah. Like, but it sounds like yeah. there's 40. It's tricky um, because because you want it to be busy, too. Right. Yeah. And that, so I, and I think that. So there's these, uh, not sure if you've heard these terms before, but diegetic and non-diegetic. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, for, 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 for listeners, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So a diegetic a sound is, is a sound that is associated with something on the screen that you can clearly identify an association with. So, you know, a coffee pot boiling in the background or something like that. You can see it, you hear the sound, you can look at the object and associate, yes, this sound is that. So that's a diegetic sound. And then there's non-diegetic sounds where, you know, maybe there's a, a clock ticking, you know, but you never see the clock. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. Um, but it's ticking, you know. And, um, and so that's, that's a sound associated with something that you don't necessarily see. And with video games, um, it's, it's tricky because if you don't put that dog bark or, you know, in the case of fallout new Vegas and Freeside, where you'll hear glass bottles shattering in the back and people sort of like, you know, like you'll hear people sound like they're getting mugged, you know what I mean? And you'll never be able to find those people, you know, right. which is, which it, Albeit w is a little frustrating because if you're like, oh, someone's screaming and then you head off in that direction, there's no one there, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but if we didn't do that, um, the world feels sort of static mm -hmm. and like it's not real. And the thing is, is if you go outside and you sort of just close your eyes for a moment and you, you just listen, there's a lot of sounds that, that are non-diegetic. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, right. So, you know... And so for, for to use your example of the four, you know, a big town and it's got four NPCs, you know, yeah. but it's supposed to be a big town. Right? right. 
like like New Vegas yet again. Um, you get you finally get to Las Vegas, right? You get to the heart of where the casinos are. Yeah. <laughs> and for memory purposes, because we were running on consoles at the time, right. um, we simply couldn't populate it with the amount of NPCs that we felt would would bring that to life. Yeah. Um, and so you know, what do you do? Um, because there's this expectation, especially in New Vegas. You finally get to New Vegas. There's the casinos. You know, your people's vision of New Vegas is this bustling sort of, right. you know, urban environment. And there's only a couple NPCs standing around. So, you know, you kind of have to sell it in other ways. And audio is really one of those is, ways. Is a good place to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, speaking of some difficulties that occur in games, uh, it, it, that pretty much that's how you and I met was because I had uh, seemed to have an issue and I, it was tyranny, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, when it comes to problems in games, when it comes to uh, to issues, one of the things that I notice, and and this might be a money thing, I, I, I would assume it probably is, but in, in particular, Alakine's gun did this, um, where you could actually hear the tonal references for where they were in the world where they were recording it. You could mm. hear that they were at a desk, mm -hmm. you know, because of course they probably don't have the money for a sound studio, smaller title. Like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it for you when you're recording real life stuff to go, oh shit, we can't have it sound um, like we're in the desert, we're recording stuff, but we don't want this one thing. Like software wise, I know some of that is work. It, 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 do you find yourself like pouring over and cleaning up like an incredible amount of the, uh, of that kind of thing? Absolutely. Yeah. You want it to sound like it fits in what what, what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, sometimes it's unavoidable, but you, you always try to make sure that that the weight of the thing that's happening is appropriate, that the space that it's in feels like it's what you're seeing. You don't want there to be a disconnect to tear you out of the experience. So yeah, yeah definitely. We, we do spend a lot of time and there's, there's a lot of time where I'll record something and the sound itself might be really great, but mm -hmm. there's maybe too much noise room, you know, like, sorry, yeah, uh, room noise room or noise, right. echo or anything. And, you know, you sort of have to move on and just get something else and try it again, you know? Yeah, because a, a lot of times when I'm uh, discussing this in re reviews or in the comments sections, I'll bring up something in a game where, um, it, it, like, things just rang a little false. And you, once you start looking at it, I mean, obviously it makes sense that a lot of it's just time. Obviously, you know, because I mean, you know, having to clean out a sound and you just spoke about pandemic, I think, where you said that you had multiple different people and you had to make them. You sort of had to r get the differences down a little bit. So they sounded like that envelope of where they all sort of sounded like they were the same. So it, it makes sense. It's just, yeah, you, you sometimes you notice that. And it's, it's one of those things that I had uh, that I had uh, wanted to always ask somebody, like, how long does it take? You know, oh, speaking of that, uh, we do get the question, what software do you use, um, especially for cleanup? Do you are you just using normal run of the mill software? Do you guys have something internal? We use um, software. It's it's by a company called Steinberg. Um, they're most famous for um, their their music software right. um, called Cubase. Um, they have a sort of post production angled version of Cubase called Nuendo, mm -hmm. which is actually very 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 pricey compared to most other DAWs. Mm -hmm. um, but it has most of the capabilities of Cubase, and you could actually expand it so that it has all the capabilities of Cubase and the post production stuff of Nuendo. Oh, gotcha. And we'll we'll go through and we'll bring up a sound and we'll listen to it and we'll edit out all the stuff you know, like birds for example. Birds are a perfect example. So, um, you know, so a lot of times you'll record birds and you'll hear sort of the air in, in right. the background and then through the air, the, the bird chirp will pierce through. And one way that you can do it is to just chop out all the air sounds and preserve the chirps mm -hmm. um, and keep their rhythm so that it sounds natural. And if you do some fading and you edit it properly, it could sound like like it's a lot cleaner. Um, so, so we'll do it in, we'll do it in our DAW, um, for the, for the pillars to crowdfunding video. Um, you know, we recorded a lot of dialogue and there was a lot of room noise. We did it like in our common, we have this big common area here at Obsidian. 
Um, and, you know, people were sort of going about their business while we were recording the interviews. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a lot of like background noises. Sometimes someone would close a door, you know, um, there was sort of a, a hum of the air conditioner. And, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and I went through all that and I cleaned it all out and I made sure that it was nice and pristine. And he didn't really hear all those artifacts. When you uh, when you're doing something like that uh, now, some people would consider that the, the the part of the job they hated. Right. Especially yeah. like an artist who do you actually enjoy that, though? Because I know some people I've talked to are like, strangely enough, in a weird way, it I sort of like doing that because the chaff goes away for a while. Do you find yeah, yourself I liking do. that? I do. Yeah, it's 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 like another problem to solve, you know, and uh -huh. I like solving problems. Um, and I, I, you know, I guess I'm, I'm sort of hold myself to my own standards and my own, you know, so it's like, I listen to it and I think to myself, you know, yeah, this is noisy dialogue. I just can't possibly let it go. You know what I mean? Right. And I guess I'm just obsessive <laughs> like that. Like, it's like, I hear noise and I can't that door close. You hear it, and I don't want it. In fact, that one door closed made it through on the video, and I'm like, Ugh! oh, dear. miss, yeah. <laughs> huh. And so, you know, yeah, definitely, I, I don't mind it at all. I love getting my hands dirty and, and getting involved in in everything, I, top to bottom. Give me whatever, I I, I enjoy it. You so, know? so speaking of pillars too, uh, crowdfunded, basically the moment you turned it on, it felt like. Um, which of Thank course, you, uh, everyone. yeah, exactly. That was pretty awesome. But I mean, it was funny because we were joking on the podcast. I, I, we were like, somebody said less than 24 hours. And I was like, dude, it was less than that. Like, I, I don't know what it was. I'm sure you guys know, but it looked like it was like 17 or 18 hours into it. It was fast, yeah, it was uh, fast. which is awesome and shows, shows some serious love for, for the pillars franchise and stuff when it comes to pillars too. Uh, of course, NDAs and stuff. So, so feel free to, to tell me to shut up when it comes to it. Have you started on the main theme yet? It's in my mind. It's in your mind. It's yeah. It, it, voice recording. Do you even have voice a, recording? Okay, gotcha. In my mind. One of these days, I'll humiliate <laughs> myself and release. Put them on what SoundCloud. I, yeah. I, I. <laughs> it'll become an internet meme probably because it's so bad. Like, so I don't know. La, 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 la. <laughs> yes, pretty much that. You know, That's it's, awesome. it's me trying my best to be serious and, right. and musical. But with my, you know, embarrassing sounding voice, singing hey, voice. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong. So you've got that. Is there anything um, that you can talk about when it comes to, uh, let's see, instrument choice? Should we expect somewhat the overall same or um, obviously depending on where this is and what exactly happens? Um, yeah. Is there any experimentation going on that you uh, for this one or is it more of a this is a sequel? So we're tying it directly to one. So it's all very early right now. Um, we haven't really started the music writing for Pillars 2 in earnest yet. So um, I can I can really speak to sort of what my personal aspirations for it are. For sure, go for it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to have a more colorful sort of um, vibrant um, hmm, okay. soundscape for the music. Um, Disney is sort of the wrong analogy because when you think Disney, it's sort of princess and fratala la and, sure. you, know, you know, very, very like that. But if you if you sort of disassociate the music of Disney film mm -hmm. from the visuals, there are these very lush and colorful and, you know, beautiful orchestral textures that they use a lot. Right. That are very evocative, but also very simple and also very, very, very nice to listen to. And so um, don't take don't take that too literally. I'm not saying we're going to do a Disney soundtrack for Pillars. Um, it's more the way that they approach the use of instruments. Sure. Um, so, for example, in a Disney film, you'd hear, you know, an oboe very clearly by itself, right. you know, doing a melody with something very beautiful behind it. And um, uh, and so what what I the what I have inside of me for what I would like to to tease out of the music next time is to have more varied orchestral colors, more range in terms of where things sit. Um, you know, in Pillars 1, a lot of it was sort of block chords, yeah. homogenous. There's some somberness um, to it. Somber. You know, I want there to be sort of a lightness to it, uh, some some color 
not not Disney in the way that you would think, but more just sort of in terms of the, the way that they use orchestral color. Right. Well, no, I mean, that makes sense, too, especially because um, while Pillars 1 was somber as hell, <laughs> uh, yes. it, it, number two, you know, the fact that you're having a sequel is already a happy, a happy moment. But the idea yes. of having more variation, I think, w- w- when that hits really, when that becomes really useful is when somebody like yourself is told a character is going to die or something. So you have to write a different kind of piece for that. And then the, because you have that more colorful bit, that more somber moment is even more poignant because it, yeah. it's such it, it's it's that dramatic difference of going, oh, shit, this is not the theme song. This is not this. This, this is like a character dying like this matters. So, yeah. Yeah, because you can't have contrast unless you exactly. have contrast. Right. I, I know that's sort of circular in, in terms of reasoning, but, you know, you can't have something soft unless something's loud. You right. know what I mean? You need right. to have that difference and, and um, you know, and I think, I think kind of keying off that for pillars too, you know, one of the things that we're experimenting with now is making the music more dynamic and pillars one, the music was in terms of the way that we implemented was very static. You go to an area, it triggers the song, right? You know, you get into combat, it goes back to the, you're out of combat. It goes back to the original song. Um, very sort of one-to-one, you know, I do a thing, I hear a thing. Um, with Pillars 2, we, we're going to experiment with, you know, having the music sort of remain the same piece of music, but just shift depending on the context of what you're doing. So maybe you're sneaking around and then the music sort of kind of gets a little bit more tense and, you know, because you've sort of raised the stakes, you right. know, and then you, you, you know, you get out of stealth and, and it sort of lifts, the veil lifts sort of slowly and transparently and then it's back to your normal thing. And then you talk to somebody and, you know, it's the same background music that's playing, but, you know, maybe it's a little more full so that it sounds more cinematic, you know, it, it, those are the things we're we're sort of looking into now. So when you're doing some, so Pil- pillars one or and tyranny was tyranny, was tyranny only fading from track to track, or did was it more? Did it have some prompts? There, so most of it, the, your your day to day sort of exploration combat sure. kind mm-hmm. of thing was was just fading between tracks. Right. Um, in both Pillars and Tyranny, there was a lot of, what you know, for special moments, narrative moments, um, we called it scripted music, where I would go in and I would oh, okay. take a bunch of different segments of music and mm-hmm. try to stitch them together. Um, it was a little, it was a little hard to do because the, the, the engine that we were using wasn't really designed to do that. We didn't really have a system in place that made that easy to do. So it ended up being very prohibitive and time consuming um and bug prone it was just really kind of rough to work with um so i think that's one of the things i noticed wasn't it i can't remember in the review yeah there was there was a couple little issues there yeah it's like you know you'll transition out of something and then the wrong music will play again you know and and it was really hard for me to iron out all those edge cases um you know using the tools that i have i'm not trying to make excuses it's you know i i did my best but um it's it is hard, um, but uh, for com- contrasting that with Pillars Two, we have a much more robust system that manages how music functions, and you could still get into trouble, but <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but you you know you have the tools to avoid that. So um, when it comes, and, and are we thinking then in, in Pillars Two, you are hoping we'll we'll say hope in front of all this because it, it is so early. Yes. Are you hoping more along the lines of, uh, so for example, for Dead Rising 4, there's different layers depending on your health in the exosuit. So if it's red, it's got a different tonal layer. It sort of changes up. Uh, BPMs don't change that much, but you know, a, an instrument's added. Does this new system in Pillars 2 have the ability to do like, okay, violins are fading in because this character you're walking up to, that's in their main theme. Is this yes. new? Oh, very cool. Uh, yes. Is this also innuendo or is this your own internal? This is, uh, this is so, um, yeah, we're, we're, uh, so I author Innuendo, I'll write the music in Nuendo, and then mm-hmm. I export it out. We, right now we're using a, uh, an audio middleware called Wise. Oh, it's uh, okay. made by, yeah, I'm sure you've heard that, that Very word good, around. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, just an audio middleware tool and it has a lot of interactive music tools and we're taking full, we want to take full advantage of For all sure. those tools. Um, so that's, that's some of the stuff that we're experimenting with at the moment. Um, you know, and we do want to we do want to be a little bit stronger with our thematic work. 
Um, we, we've have some ideas. We haven't quite implemented any of that stuff, but one of the things that you'll hear. So in pillars one, th there were themes like Theos had a theme. Exactly. Um, right. You know, Aora had its theme. Um, and, and I brought those back, you know, in certain moments and I, and also, um, Widewind's legacy, the, the sort of ailment that was happening to all the, well, spoiler alert, I yeah. guess, um, <laughs> So, you know, there's sort of this ailment that's happening and that had a theme and I tried to sort of associate those wherever possible. But in in um, in P Pillars 2, regardless of what we what we do, there will be stronger thematic work where, oh, you know, gotcha. characters have themes and you'll be able to associate that. I mean, that is that is something that we're planning on doing. How that ends up playing out in terms of functionality is still sort of up in the air. Either way, we're going to do something like that. So sure. I, it's funny because when I was talking to Austin Wintery, um, I think we were talking in particular about Abzu, if I remember right. Um, I was asking him a question and I'd, I'd like to ask you, especially because you're, you're jumping into this with Pillars 2. Do you, do you think or are you a little bit nervous, though, that what you want somebody to hear will adjust so much because of how they play that it won't be what you expected. And the reason why I bring that up is because currently buying OSTs is huge. Like, oh, we're going to get this OST. Well, talking to Austin, talking to Jesse, they're like, dude, the OST is not the game. Like, that's not what you're going to hear in the game. I mean, it's not. It's it's sort of my arrangement at the end to say, here's overall what the the OST is. Are you a little nervous about this more dynamic, like they won't, I want to, I want to deliver this, but they may not hear it because Carrick may not kill the guy or may not walk to this one area. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. It is, there is often a difference between what you're hearing in the game, particularly if the music is layered like that and mm -hmm. it's more sort of assembled in run at runtime based off of player choice, you know, it could be different for everyone. Um, and, and I think, you know, and so you sort of have to do sort of a, a, a greatest hits after the fact, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, for for Pillars, I think that's that's part of the beauty of an Obsidian game, I guess, is the way to put it. Because uh, for us, um, player choice and player agency and reacting to those choices is something that we want. And we yeah, want to provide paramount. as much, you know, as exactly as much variety as possible, um, you know, so, so, you know, you may play through the game and never hear some of the music I've ever written. Yeah. And you know what? But the, what, what's cool about that is your experience was different than everyone else's, you know, and your experience is unique. It's it's not the experience someone else had. And that's kind of neat, you know? Yeah, it's, I, I always find it impressive that composers, for the most part, well, sound, sound design and composers are, are very cool with that, uh, because I know a lot of other artists would be like, I made this, damn it. This, you know, like a lot of people don't want to paint and have it interactive, right? Like, right. They're like no, I just painted this, damn it. You, you need to yeah. look at what I painted. And so the idea of you painting with sound and saying, you know what, like uh, uh, your job is basically to make sure it sounds good regardless of what they're doing and everything yeah. mends together. And the player uh, is, is just interacting with that. Um, yeah. if, if you had to, and this is putting you on the spot when it comes to other games. Uh oh. If I said, what is a soundtrack what's one of the best soundtracks not not the best but what's one of the best soundtracks you can remember from a video game my favorite soundtrack of all time is uh morrowind are you kidding are you joking no okay that's crazy that's crazy that's my favorite soundtrack of all time <laughs> is it really oh dude si dude Syedine. i probably pronounce in the first place wrong but morrowind uh exploratory music uh er every single location is fantastic I love it. It's so good. It's just too good. Like, yeah. And when they brought that back for Skyrim, it was like, oh my God, yes, this is perfect. Like I, I could listen to that all the time, man. I, it's, it, there's something about it. You know, there's a power, there's a brooding power mm -hmm. that is not dark necessarily. And it's just, uh, there's sort of a, this is going to sound super cheese ball and I really I apologize, but there's like a mysticism to it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Especially if you played through the game and you have those memories. Uh, yeah, well, there's very it, I mean, it's actually there's some mysticism going on with, you know, Vivek and all that stuff. What uh, what's your favorite? Do you remember a favorite place or, or a song that you really liked from that? Oh, man. The main theme always gets me, man. It like, does, I doesn't just... it? So good. Who so wrote good. that, by I... the way? Um, 
oh man, who wrote the, I'll have to go look that up. Uh, but it's funny you mention it because we were just discussing like favorite. Um, and I had at one cho time chosen Mass Effect because I just admit like uh, it was unique and and uh, and just. Oh, but uh, I recently replayed Morrowind less than like three weeks ago on an Xbox original. And nice. Yeah. And I turned it on and I was like, oh, shit. It's it's that moment where you turn you, you do you turn on. You're like, oh, I you know, time and history have separated the, oh, the yeah. greatness from this, not me. Like it's, it, it hasn't stopped being great. It's just that oh. my m removal from it in years had, had, f I'd forgotten. And then I turned it on. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. It um, is. When stops it, you in your tracks. It, it does. And, and I, I don't want to keep you too long. So uh, wh how much longer do you got? Whatever you want, man. I'm okay. here to talk. So um, when it comes to Pillars 2, you, you're, you're, you are in the early bits and you're doing composing and sound design or you're just doing composing? Um, mostly composing, um, and directing the team, um, the sound designers that we have here, we've got, uh, three sound designers. We've got, um, Zachary Simon. He's been here for a few years. He worked on stick of truth and pillars and tyranny, uh, and our other game armored warfare. Um, and actually pretty much I, the, the cool thing about obsidian is sort of a resume buster for, uh, sound designers. Cause you just work on everything. So we've got another guy, Adam Laywald. He's been here for a few years. Uh, we just, um, hired, uh, in an in intern, um, Bobby Thayer, he interned for us on uh, Stick of Truth a couple times too. So, oh, cool. you know, they, they're going to handle the majority of the sound design duties. But, you know, I I work with them to make sure that we're, you know, trying new things, um, not limiting ourselves, making sure that we are, you know, you know, they're, they're awesome sound designers. They're all very, um, you know, all the sounds that you hear uh, in, in Pillars 1 and Tyranny, that's all those guys. Um, and, uh, you know, I just work with them to make sure that, you know, work with them to, to inspire them, hopefully, um, and, and, and uh, help them help them because they, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work, uh, sound that goes into right. a, something like that. So but I do try to, you know, for Pillars 1, I, I chose like something that I wanted to work on for sound. So I uh -huh. did like the I did the Audra Dragon and the uh, the Sky Dragon and the oh. Drakes. Oh, gotcha. And you actually did those, went and, and put those together. Yeah. Uh, how about how about discussing the components of that? Mm -hmm. What are the components of that uh, of that dragon? Um, so when, whenever we, we do a, a creature like that, uh -huh. what, we, what we usually do is sort of look at how it behaves when it's in the game. So there's the animations that are playing and then there's the sort of system, the AI that's controlling it right. uh, to give it its behavior. So it's attacks and how it reacts to you attacking it and all right. those things. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll wait for the team to sort of do their thing and then we'll, we'll bring it up in game and we'll take a video of it and we'll break it down into its parts. Okay. Here's a breath attack. Here's a melee attack. Uh, here's, here's an acid attack. Here's a fire attack. Here's a stomp attack. Um, his, here's how he moves and we'll sort of break it into its, it, to its parts. And then we basically score it like a film, you know, we will, we'll take our video in. Okay. Now we're going to work on the footsteps. And so we make our big, huge booming footsteps. And now we're going to do the wing flaps. So when he jumps up in the air and when he lands on the ground, we'll do a big sort of booming land. And, you know, when he does, you know, and how, how does his voice sound, you know, right. how, or her, you know, how, how do their, you know, what does a dragon voice sound like? You know, what does it sound like when they spit out fire? Um, you know, and we, we do all that and we, there's some R and D that happens. You will try things. Um, there's a lot of trial and error because there are no dragons. So we kind of have to make it up, you know? Um, and, uh, and, you know, and then over time we'll have all the components, the sort of the organs, I guess, of the, of the, of the thing. And then we go into our middleware and our game engine and we sort of stitch them onto the skeleton mm -hmm. of which is the animation. And we have the we play those sounds on these animation timelines. So basically when you're looking at a dragon walking through, it's all of these animation clips that are sort of blending together. And, gotcha. and, it's, and uh, so we'll 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 sort of tack on tack on, I guess we'll we'll yeah, I guess that's the right word. We'll tack on our sounds onto that animation and you know and then we'll, you know, we'll sort of step back and listen to how all of the components are working with one another. And then we'll do sort of a second pass where we're, you know, it didn't, you know, it sounded great uh -huh. in Nuendo, but, it, you know, when we got it in the game, it was kind of eh, not so great. So we'll sort of massage it. And then, you know, that's the end result. 
So when you um, when you're like, let's say a, a dragon's walking forward, this is something uh, that is always asked. Are are you like fully? Are, are you like? Do you have a fully stage there? Like, are you guys going in and okay? So, are you're talking about like when a dragon moves his leg? Mm-hmm. Are you the person who's like, I need to figure out what leather on leather sounds like? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you find that stuff? Because that's some of it's physical versus digital, where you're like, I already know I can buy this sample or whatever. Do you do you go for your own created sounds more than? let's say purchased i and and that's not an artistic i'm not dissing on the artist i mean yeah. obviously it's very hard to to have your own time to do that but yes do you find yourself going with what you've created as, as often as possible it's it's usually a blend um you know some things are really hard to record so yeah right 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 you know what i mean so like we have it we we were doing a tank game um and wow i mean you know making arrangements to record tanks moving and shooting and mm-hmm. doing all that stuff and getting hit by a round. Like, how do you record that? You <laughs> right. know? Um, so, you know, you know, or, you know, or, or things like, um, you know, animals, for example, like lions or something like that. Um, it is a time factor. Um, you know, it's always better if you can to just go record your stuff because first of all, it'll sound like no one else's right. Like no one else can have that sound. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, it's bespoke to your game. And then, um, you know, and, and then often you can get what, you know, you need, it's like more flexible, right? It's more flexible and it's more direct. It's like, I need a lion to do this thing. And I, you know, I called the zookeeper and they said that they have this lion that does that thing. And so I'm going to try it, you know, or even with the, the dragon. Um, so, you know, the dragon does this sort of wing flap buffet ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On you. And um, all I did was take a big tarp and kind of like <laughs> go like that with it. And and then I edited it and it sounds like a wing flap of a dragon, but it's just a tarp. You know what I mean? Um, so so there's it's often more direct to mm-hmm. record your own fully because you know what you need. You know, it's just finding the right materials and, and just doing it. And um, I would I would assume in the long term, it might even be cheaper to do your own, even though maybe an up for upfront cost for a nice small studio area for you guys to do that might be a lot. But if yeah. you do buy somebody else's and it's not as flexible, then yeah. like you said, yeah, if, if, if you need a lion to do a particular thing and they're not doing it anywhere, what do you, you know, it's like we're, we're going to have to get that naturally. And, yeah. and, and be able to be able to adjust it. Um, yeah. Do you uh, that gets you up and away from your desk sometimes? Do, are, are you like a big fan of that? Do you find yourself like, I think I'm going to go and make some footstep sounds for a dragon today? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, it's easy to sort of get trapped in your little cave, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. With yeah. your sign on the door, you said it's like, do yeah. not disturb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and you kind of look at the time. You're like, wow, is it six o'clock? You know, I mean, time flies. And um, so, yeah, it's it's. I love getting my hands dirty with that kind of stuff. It's it's just a ton of fun. Um, you know, the more time you have to do it too, the better off because then you can kind of do it at a nice relaxed pace. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the pace is very kind of very rapid and you just have to, all right, let's get the tarp. All right, that's done. Now put it in. Let's edit it. Let's put it in the game. You know, there's it's kind of rapid fire and, you know, um, but it's it's definitely one of the more enjoyable things because you're making stuff, you know, right. and, and there's that pride, you know, like anytime... I don't know if if you're if you do any handiwork or anything like that around the house, you know, you kind of build a thing and yeah. then you kind of look back at it and then you go to the other room and then you kind of walk back slowly and you look at it again, you know, cuz cuz you made that thing and so it just makes you feel good to know yeah. that. Yeah, prior to that was an empty space and now mm-hmm. the, now my terrible chair no one can sit in is there. <laughs> right? Cuz I cuz I'm not very good at that. Um one of the things I want to talk about real quick then is is sound itself. Uh, it, this is brought up actually two patrons asked the same question uh, and I appreciate that guys. One of the uh, the one question being and I want to make sure that I'm not dissing on any particular games if there's somebody out there watching this, but sometimes you get sounds and and I'm probably using the incorrect term but where they sort of inhabit the same frequency range and especially in a very busy battle, one of my biggest offenders and it's something that I've literally emailed the company about and it's been like dude you have to fix this is dynasty warrior style games. So you're attacking people and everything inhabits the same overall area, most likely because they feel that there's some other stuff they want to make some room for. And you get this very numbing attack sound like shing, shing, shing. And you're like, dude, nothing, not everything sounds like that. Like, where's the variation? Where's that? Do you find 
of course, working is a little different in a in in the style of games you do. But I guess you did in New Vegas. Do you find that difficult? And do you ever notice that as well, or is it just me being completely nitpicky? Oh no no no! That is that is major for for most sound designers. I would have to say, um, you know, I, I there was an interview um, with some of the folks from Bungie, and they were talking mm-hmm. about um, Destiny and the sounds for Destiny. They had a video doc for that. And uh, one of the one of the sound designers there said, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure that the player is comfortable when they listen to our game because you can actually physically hurt. You can, yeah, with a sound. Right. You know, you can damage someone's ears if the frequencies are, you know, hit just you right, just right yeah. enough times at loud volumes. You know, because people do like to they like to feel immersed, <laughs> yeah. right? So they, <laughs> yeah, they crank it up, you know, and so you. You have to be responsible as a sound designer to make sure that that shing 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 does, you know, figure out a way to to achieve that same result without injuring someone or causing them to be annoyed. Um, so there's this. I'm sure you've heard this before. The, the listener fatigue. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, you hear the same sound over and over again, and your brain just kind of tunes it out because it's getting on your nerves and, you know, it's making you tired. It's distracting you from the game at a subconscious level that you're not even aware of. Right. And it can make you not want to play the game. Yeah. Um, and that's the worst. Um, you know, some folks just deal with that by turning set game sound off completely. And that's totally fine. I have no problem with that. If, if, if you enjoy the game more that way, more power to you, you know, turn it off. Um, but if you're going, if you do want to listen to the audio and you do expect that, um, it's up to us to make sure that what you're listening to is an enjoyable experience. You know, you didn't pay $60 or whatever it is to, you know, to, to not enjoy the experience. You, you go into it with the faith that the developer is, is, you know, has the best intentions for you. You know what I mean? And maybe, maybe I'm like taking on too much responsibility for the sound designer, but no, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I asked this of uh, pretty much everybody now because, um, it, and so do patrons, it's, it's one of the things we talk about all the time. And I, I notice in it, it's sadly enough, there's a lot of, uh, fairly popular games where a particular sound will be like, I have no, cl- like, I have no clue how they thought that was going to be acceptable for 455 yeah. hours of playing this MMO or whatever, you know, and yeah. it, it becomes, um, it, it becomes quite, like you said, quite numbing it, or, you know, it, listener fatigue. And I, I think also there's a variation, you know, if you have four people all shooting 45, uh, handguns, there's the ability to put some variation there so they don't all sound the same. But a lot of times you'll get a game where you're playing it and you're like, man, we all sound like if we're playing a multiplayer game. We all sound identical. Like it's we're yeah. you can literally tell tonally that it's the same sample. And you'd be like, yeah. dude, seriously, I mean you have to switch it up. And what I've noticed in, in a lot of games is they they shrink they they get particular sounds and they shrink them into these frequencies that that it's almost like they're trying like I said, trying to make space for something else. Maybe they are. Um yeah. And then it becomes, like you said, it becomes annoying. And and it's good to hear somebody like yourself say how important that is, because I think, to be brutally honest, a lot of fans think that it's not taken seriously. Yeah, no, we do. Um, it's and and it's it's really hard too because you know we think about it a lot. At least I know that I do, and I try to sure. raise a, that awareness here at Obsidian. Um, you know, we we put a lot of effort into avoiding that, and sometimes we think we've done our job and we've done that. And then there's that one sound that we totally just, I guess, have accepted. Right. And then when someone gets it with fresh <laughs> ears, it's like, shing, 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 shing. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and we're like, oh yeah, uh, I guess that is pretty bad. And you know, it, it's, 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 it's hard. It's, it's, especially when you're working on something for so long, right. you start to, your objectivity starts to go out the window, you yeah. know? Yeah. What do you find? Um, how do you return your objectivity? You have to take a break. It's called, oh. it's like a critical break. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like I need to step away <laughs> and not work on this for like three days. And, um, you know, we don't always have that luxury. Um, but, uh, that's the best way. So, uh, a patron asked a question and the, uh, don't worry, nobody will hold it against you. Okay. Uh, um, we'll see. understanding pillars two is probably your dream game. Uh, you know, everybody says that on the current game. That's fine. What's your dream game, though? <laughs> That's uh, multiple people have been like, uh, for example, um, 
sci, you know, sci-fi uh, or, or something like that? Is there any game out there that, how about this? Is there a game out there that you've seen that you're like, man, I would have loved to have worked on the sound on that or music, yeah, either one? Definitely. There's definitely games like that. Um, there are games that when they're released have sort of like reached this sort of like beyond critical mass of acceptance, but just sort of like people view it in such high regard. And it's usually like this underdog game that comes out and right. it just sort of takes the industry by storm. And there's a couple games that came out like that, that sort of speak to you on a level that's beyond games. Like it sort of reaches through the game and sort of touches you right. in a way that like, you know, that you, resonates with you as a human being. And there's, there's two games like that in particular in the past. And I would love to work on a game like this. Um, so Limbo. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I loved that game. I mm -hmm. loved the sound for that game. And the, the ending was so cathartic. You know what I mean? Um, it was just such a beautiful moment. Right. And it's like, how do you make something so glorious? You know what I mean? It's just, um, and I had a similar experience like that with, uh, with Bastion as well. Gotcha. Um, you know, particularly at the very end of the game where they're singing that song and you're sort of circling your way to the yep. very end. I mean, um, that was just so poignant. And I came away, you know, I would love to work on a game like that where you just, you have, you know, it's, it's, a, it's about the total experience. Now, I, I'm not, I don't want to say that we don't try to do that here at Obsidian because we do. Mm -hmm. It's just a different kind of game. You know, this is a more intimate experience. So I'd love to work on a game like that where the objective is to sort of speak directly with the, and, and, and go hand in hand with the player and guide them on an experience. And it, and it is more of a solo bastion, one play, one character, you know, versus multiple people in a party that are switching out. So it's, yeah, it's, it's for sure. It's, it's different for you. Um, but yeah, it's always interesting to ask somebody because, uh, you get, especially that I had, I had forgotten about limbo and, uh, I, I asked somebody and they were Ori in the blind forest. One of my, um, almost considered, uh, one of my favorite games of that year was another one that somebody had said, they were like, man, I just, I, I he's like, I just want to pet that damn Fox all day long. <laughs> like, you know, and, and it's cool to hear you guys seen other titles, you know, because I know we talk about developers and, and composers being so busy. And even yourself had said, like, sometimes, like, I don't have time to do anything else. Uh, it's nice to hear some of that love, love for other titles. And, and oh, yeah, it's definitely cool. So finishing this up, we have a couple patron questions about outside work. What are your passions outside of music? Uh, what are your passions outside of game development completely? Some people say cooking, for example, that, those kind of things. Oh my God, he has none, people. <laughs> okay, just, so this is all he does. <laughs> so okay, I'm just crazy. Um, I am a workaholic, um, and <laughs> so I think about work way more than I should. But I'll tell you one thing that I love is going out into nature. Uh -huh. um, I went to Yosemite Valley for the first time this year in oh, my life. Very cool. I want to go to all those national parks now. I mean, like it just. I can't even begin to express how amazing that experience was. Um, and if I had more time, I would do it a lot more. Um, you know, I've got a family, so my, my, a lot of my focus outside of work is on, on raising my kids. Sure. Um, you know, I've got three beautiful little girls and me and my wife, we, we, all of our focus, they're little now, so they were demand a lot of attention. Yeah, and right. So I come home and it's like work, kids, work, kids, little snippet of just in time and work, right. kids, work, kids, you know. Um, but I don't know what it is, man. I think too much about my job. Like I I'm the thing is, is that I'm doing what I've always wanted to do, you know, and before I was doing it, that's all I could think about, you know, and I I feel so lucky that I'm able to say that, you know, I mean, you know, not everyone is able to say that. And, and I know that, you know what I mean? Because I've been there and I've, you know, my parents were like that, you know, my, my wife's parents were like that. I know people who, you know, it, the day job is, is, is part of their life, you right. know, and I can say that, I'm able to do what I love and um, 
I hope that doesn't sound too entitled or anything like that. I, I feel very blessed to be able to do the thing that I love most. No, we talk about it on the channel. I've worked 23 years in industries that was seven days a week. And so I don't know how many thousands of extra hours of overtime I've done. So the moment I got to review games, I was just like, oh, shit, I'm finally get to do like what I I've always wanted to do. So yeah. I think people like that, um, especially like yourself, who had always wanted to do it, played games and then got to do it. Uh, keeping that fresh perspective is always very cool. And it's, it is rare. I know some people, are, you know, after a while, maybe they, they move on to other things. But um, no, it's very cool hearing somebody still very passionate about it. And another question is, what are some misconceptions you see regarding Sounder Music in the general public forums, reviewers like Carrick, <laughs> that you wouldn't wish to continue? So basically, um, what do we say that's wrong? <laughs> Good question. Okay. I will <laughs> tread funny. very carefully here because I don't want to give the impression that I, I think that anyone is deliberately trying to do something. Oh, gotcha. um, uh, Because I, I can guarantee that that's not the case. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about your reviews is that how thoughtful you are and you, you commented on every part of the soundscape and you separated them out into into components and you didn't just say the soundtrack right. is like this. Um, and a lot of times what people mean by that is everything they heard, right? Right. Voice, music, blah, blah, blah. They all kind of lump it together and they sort of assign some sort of grade to it. And, you know, to me, it's, you know, I know that audio is not the focus of the game, um, but your reviews are very insightful because you say the ability sounded this way. And when you walk, it sounds this way. And when you listen to the birds, it sounds this way. And the music is like this and it shifts in this way. And the characters act this way. And I like this one and this one I didn't like. And you're articulate about that. And for me, I would love to see more reviewers take time to step away from the game and think about not only do they like the sound? Do they like the music? Is there something in particular that you heard that you thought was really cool that really worked and that you always wanted to go back and listen to like, um, or that you looked forward to, mm -hmm. um, you know, break it out more, be more granularity with your assessment. I know that that's not always practical. Um, you know, especially, you know, when you have a lot of video games to, to review, um, it can be time consuming to get to that level. But I find that most folks focus on the, th the immediate, I'm playing a thing, I'm doing a thing. Right. This is my experience of the thing. Yeah. Um, so so if, I, if I could encourage more reviewers to do what, the, what you do, it, which is to the take a step back, really open, listen, you know yeah. what I mean? Just hold still. Don't even play. Just listen to what you're hearing around you. You know what I mean? Take it in because we spend a lot of time pouring over every little right, piece right. of what you hear. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that just kind of goes, you know, and I guess that that's sort of the objective, right? Like, we don't want you to notice like, hmm, that footstep sounds very deliberate. You know what I mean? We we don't want you to, we want you to take it all in as right. as one thing. But, you know, it is nice to hear when, when someone calls out this one little thing that you did and you're like, wow, they noticed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, um, it, 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 that's a good question for, from that patron, because I do, I do think, especially when it comes down to it, you guys, uh, music is, it, and it's, uh, by the way, sound music and voice is why I started reviewing. So, nice. um, because as somebody who worked in that facility, I was just like, it, no one's covering it. I personally don't agree with you. And I think that anybody could cover it in very small amount of time. I don't think it requires anything extra. In fact, what I think happens is people pare down too much. Um, because they don't know. That's one of the things, like when I talk, and I make mistakes all the time. Like, um, well, you and I had back and forth. It was like when you were, because I obviously in the review didn't explain well enough. So you had to email me and go, okay, I need to know this. Um, so, By the way, can I, if I could, if I may, we finally found what you heard. Oh, did like you? the other day. Oh, oh whoa. Uh, which, uh, where the, was it the, the part where I, where I was saying, was it the glitches or where I was saying where when I hit, sometimes I wouldn't hear a sound. That... Gotcha. And also you would hear like this distortion. You called out that you would yeah. hear like, we finally figured out what that was. And this was just like a couple of days ago. And I'm like, oh, was, we was it just sounds on top of each other? Yeah. 
we we're still looking into it. We're not sure, but there is oh, wow. there is a glitch that can happen under very specific circumstances, and it sounds like distortion. Distortion, gotcha. Very, okay. very, very. Dis- and I think you have to be in a very particular spot. Game maybe? state. Yeah. Oh, game state. Okay, gotcha. Like we- you need a special circumstance to get that to happen. So we're trying to reproduce that now. But when I heard you say that, I was like. Oh wow! Okay, I, you know, it didn't bother me that you brought that up because it's that's totally valid. Like it was affecting your experience, you know, and and for me that was great. Yeah, I just um, I, I I'm glad to hear like somebody like yourself still like paying attention to other reviews too because one of the things that bothers me is a lot of times music is just it's bad. Like that's all you hear. Voices. Oh, the voices are bad. And on a lot of reviews, that's all they cover. And that's one of the reasons why I do cover it, because I do feel that there's dude, there's so much work. Like when, when I interviewed Agent 47, uh, sorry, David Bateson, I just that's what I called him through half of that interview. <laughs> but these guys put in, you know, depending on the voice actor strike and stuff like that, you, you also hear about some pretty shitty work environments at times. And so yeah. there's a lot of vocals. There's a lot of music. And unfortunately, it's truncated down to a blurb. And, um, you know, when I see a three minute review, I'm like, that could have been three minutes and 50 seconds. It would have taken 50 seconds to say you liked, you know, the instrument choice, a couple things here and there. And I think what that does is people don't realize you can't get better if you get no feedback. Yeah. The best feedback I ever got was, dude, you suck. Like, yeah. and I was like, whoa, wait. And it was somebody I respected. I was like, what you what's going on? And then you pick up on that. If you yes. don't get anything. How the fuck are you supposed... Well, for example, that bug, let's say more people hit it. If none of us mentioned it, that bug would just continue. And yeah. you guys would be clueless about it. Yeah, and it like kind of pulled you out of the experience, right? Yeah. And like, if you didn't bring it up, I wouldn't... I don't think I would have found it, you know? Uh, or that it wasn't me. It was the QA folks here that, that are pretty awesome and they, they were able to identify it. But the point is, is that, you know... Yeah, I mean, we need more than a blurb. We we, 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 we want welcome your feedback. We... We make games not for ourselves. We make them to share with you guys, you right. know, because games are cool. We're all we all love games. Um, we want you guys to have fun, and it's great. That's why like crowdfunding and stuff like that is really awesome because it's it's a direct line, instant like, feedback, instant feedback. Yeah, you know, and you, you know, you're doing it for them. You know, um, you, you do it for yourself. It's it's a complete picture, and and it's not to say that when you're not crowdfunding, you're not doing it for them. It's just you know you have that added responsibility, you know. Right, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. We love that feedback. You know, we 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 crave it. Yeah, it's it's very open of you because I know um, I think that a lot of musicians are like that where they're like uh, I I if I'm not a musician if nobody's listening I'm just a person making sounds in a like some basement somewhere unless somebody's listening and and in hearing it and or at least you're not I don't know if you would say some people probably disagree with me and say you can still be a mus- musician if nobody heard you but at some point uh, like I'm not a I'm not a hundred percent sure I even agree with that you know uh, you guys do need to have people feedback and um, the more the more the merrier as long as people understand I do know myself like I said I make mistakes because like I don't have the experience you do, but I have some experience and sometimes that can make it even worse because you'll think something should happen. And the person who knows what the fuck they're doing is like, no, dumbass, that's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and people call me out on it, but, um, I think the more training people can get, the more understanding. And for example, I just talked to somebody at a major website. Uh, I'm not going to say who, uh, who's a reviewer. And I said, dude, seriously, I, I don't, you, you had a little complaint about some of the music. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're probably using like $5 skulls earbuds. And he's like, well, yeah, I am. I'm all, then what the fuck are you, why are you even reviewing music? Like, and yeah. I'm, not, and I'm not an audiophile. I mean, I've got nice head, but come on. Like yeah. somebody, and half of them, I, I was actually have a reviewer who lives near me. He came over and he plays a video game with one, fucking, one ear pad in like, so he can talk on his phone and shit. I'm like, dude, <laughs> That's what are you doing? Like, first of all, you're you're impacting the gameplay because you're not as good. You don't have stereo separation for like if it's a 3D shooter. Yeah. But for somebody like yourself, how can they give you you know feedback if they're using their Fred Meyer 499? You know. Yeah. Ex- yeah. Exactly. Let's be honest with each other. You know, like we we're we're trying to give you the best experience possible. And... Meet us halfway. <laughs> Yeah, you know, meet us halfway. And, and, you know, I'm not saying like go spend a bunch of money, but no. like if you're going to evaluate what we do give us a fair shake you know what i mean um you know we try to make our sounds that's the that's one of the you actually touched upon one of the trickier things about sounds is because and music 
for video games, we try to make our 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 soundscape translate on all devices. Of course. But there's a certain point where the <laughs> lowest common denominator. It's like, you mean you mean it won't sound, sound good, good on my Android phone? Yeah. Justin, like, come on, man. <laughs> it's like a speaker. Have you ever seen the speaker <laughs> yeah, on these things? It's yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's a big, wafer. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's and, and, you know, th but there are some magicians out there who are able to make stuff sound on great on anything, you know, and that's you know that's that's the holy grail right there, man. You know, if all, you can all do power it. to him. Um, closing this up, do you have anything you want to uh, get out news wise for Pillars Two or yourself? And uh, anything I can put, I'll, I'll put some links in the descriptions, everybody, for for Justin's. Uh, um, you got a sound? You have a SoundCloud? Yes. And you've got, um, there's another website. I can't remember the name. I'll put both of those in there. And then cool. um, anything for Pillars 2 or anything you want to announce or talk about? Um, yeah, if, if any if anyone has any follow up questions about, you know, some of the career stuff and you want to hit me up on Twitter, for example, that's probably a good place to do it. Oh, very um, good. It's uh, Sonic presence sonic underscore presence um i'll put a link in the description shoot out a question uh if you have if you have that just i'm happy to answer but yeah it's great talking with you man I'm, re I'm really happy that we finally got to do this and um you know and and thanks for all the awesome work that you're doing i think your reviews are really great thank you very much uh stick around for a second everybody else peace out thanks for watching again justin bell uh some of the uh, best uh music for some of the best games out there Definitely check it out. Oh, and are you guys selling OSTs um, anywhere? I for 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 any of these. I mean, I'm sure uh, Vegas is out there, but like, is Pillars One's OST out there? On like yeah, website? Bethesda does have an OST for New Vegas. Um, we have an OST for for Pillars. You can get it on iTunes. Uh, iTunes. Pick it up on. Uh, it's on Spotify. It's on Pandora. You can get it on Amazon. Um, Paradox. Uh, I. I think they uh, released the OST with the with the game. Okay. Uh, there's certain packages there, and then Pillars Two, um, it's one of the funding tiers. I think you can actually have it as an add-on okay. to add the uh, the physical CD if you wanted. All right. So throw Justin some money, guys. Uh, go go pick up those OSTs. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>